Welcome to Criminalution.com. I'm Stephen Burns, and we're going to continue to talk about the possibilities of uh, using or customizing the walking pen in Photoshop for your brushes. Now, if you want to learn more about this, um, the class that I teach that specializes in the walking pen is the intermediate class. Go to my workshops link on my website access or target the intermediate class link and right here um, May 9th well this is this is a you know by the time you're watching this video it will be a different date so definitely come back and and look at my site and find out when the new dates for the intermediate class will be offered um, the very first day of the class is the use and customization of the Wacom tablet you're required to have a Wacom tablet they're all five-week classes all right okay so um, without with that said let's go into Photoshop and let's let's look at other possibilities for customizing this for your workflow. Now, what we've already done is under the transfer is we selected pin pressure for both the opacity and flow. And once again, it's the same thing as opacity and flow right here on your options panel for your brush properties. Now, what I'm going to do, and one other thing I would like to just review is that you're under your brush tip shape is where you adjust your spacing okay so that's one of the areas that a lot of my students forget about now let's go over to the shape dynamics and see what options that we have here I'm going to pull these back to zero pull everything back to zero um, because it automatically jumped to settings I was playing with previously and if I go ahead and stroke this you know again you know very light and very hard I get this nice little stroke in here let's go ahead and hit delete key and under the shape dynamics we're gonna start there we have options basically what what jitter means is alter the shape over the length of the stroke so if I pull this you can see the shape changes here if I pull it over to here the shape starts changing even more drastically so if I go part way and I come over here and, and, and paint you can see the edge effects that's happening there is taking this line and moving it and, and altering its shape over the length of my uh, stroke. If I pull it all the way to the right, of course, it becomes even more drastic. So you can this could be some great texture uh, for brick or, or some sort of uh, metal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit delete key to, uh, delete key on my keyboard and what else can we do what about if we pull this back and look at the angle jitter now this is one of my favorites because if I pull the angle look at that it starts to alter the angle of the brush alright so I'm pressing light because I still have transfer selected so if I press light and go harder it goes even harder I press lighter again of course I can paint with any color but it's so much easier in terms of uh, presentation on video to see what's going on if my foreground color is black alright so that's your angle jitter let's pull this back and let's go back to normal again and what would happen if we have roundness jitter go ahead and adjust that it gives you the same effect as your sizing jitter only because this is a linear brush okay so if I go back to brush tip shape this is your sizing or, or your your shape I should say and if I can take the shape and I can squish it just like so and let's go to shape dynamics let's turn off the roundness jitter go back to normal go back to brush tip shape and if I adjust this you can see what's going on I can even adjust the angle like so so if I start you can see the angle of my brush is changed okay and I can adjust the shape of that as you can see alright so we start to get some pretty little interesting shapes in and in a look on, on the brush it's probably going to be easier if you're right-handed if you're left-handed it might be easier just to click on that arrow and point it the other way and paint in this direction okay alright so that's 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 the nature of the sizing so let's go ahead and pull this back straight up and down right to the side actually here we are if we go back to shape dynamics that once again is what the roundness is doing so I can add a combination of sizing jitter and the angle and roundness and get some pretty little funky effects here alright see that press a little harder and I'll press light and a little harder and you can see almost like you know 
tree garland on a uh, on a Christmas tree almost a little bit. So all right, or sparkles in the air. Alright, so and that's for a whole another tutorial. So if I just press down just lightly, it, we can see how each little stroke is giving us a different set of parameters because once again that's the nature of jitter alter it over the length of the stroke alright well so what let's go ahead and bring these back down let's go ahead and bring them back down to zero all the sliders and let's go to scatter let's go hit scatter here and let's see what scatter does look what it does I can scatter all of these strokes go ahead and look at that it's just scattering everywhere all right and I can I can increase the scatter I can decrease it control how much is scattering I can control the count of the scatter which means the more that's popping out of that nozzle or, or spring out of the, out of the nozzle in, in one stroke and I pull the count back and I can do count jitter so if I pull a little bit of the count I can jitter the count as you can see here happening and you're going to get a different effect there alright so let's pull all of these back to zero and what would happen if I add a combination of the of, of, of shape and scattering let's select the shape alter its sizing alter its angle in fact let's go to shape dynamics and, and give myself some spacing just a little bit see what's happening there go to scattering itself add a little bit of scattering almost, almost looks like a little pickup sticks game add a little more of a count if I want to and some count jitter and we start to paint we get in all these little different effects okay so basically this has to do with a with you know altering your imagination using your imagination to get a look that you want all right so I'm gonna hit uh, delete on my keyboard and I'm making sure my transfer transfer is, is pin pressure is all there now I'm going to skip the texture in a dual brush for the reason that I want to show you how the color dynamics work let's turn off the shape dynamics and turn off the scattering turn on the color dynamics and let's see what happens here let's go ahead and select my foreground color we'll make it red let's select the background color and give it a nice uh, vivid green and if we paint right now I'm going to bring up the brush size just a little bit bigger if we paint now we're getting what the foreground color right that's that's to be expected now right here where it says foreground and background color that's adjusted over a little bit about uh, approximately a third of the way through and see what's happening you see that green popping out through there let's go ahead and zoom in a little closer and hit delete and you can see that green coming in just a little bit now let's go over here and add a little more alteration or, or the position of the green and red actually how much of the green and red is actually pulling through per stroke you can see that really jumping through let's go ahead and pull my uh, panel my my tools panel over to the side hit delete again to clear that go all the way to the right and you can see more of a pure color of the red and green coming out alright so I'm gonna hit uh, command zero command or control zero and what that will do is it'll pop it down to full frame and let's go ahead and hit command A make sure everything's selected and hit delete alright so um, I even have hue jitter now with the extreme use of foreground and background what happens if we apply hue jitter let's bring the hue on over look what it's doing is altering the hue over the length of the stroke you see that if I go even further give it a comparison it's really altering the hue from one color to the next over the length of the stroke saturation jitter let's pull that all the way on over and see what it does okay in fact let's pull hue jitter all of, all the way back let's hit delete and let's see what it does okay there we go so the saturation is really high we pull the saturation out alright so it's just keeping the initial red and green but if we apply the saturation all the way to the right it's altering the saturation throughout the length of the stroke as you can see okay 
from real lightly saturated to more saturated. All right, so um, brightness jitter, the same concept. We can bring that on through. And as you can see, it's starting to get darker. And see, everything's getting more of a grayer color. It's going from a light gray all the way to a darker gray, um, altering the brightness of the, of the colors, adding your 256 shades of gray and variations to your color. All right, so purity is the pure color coming through. Almost like a saturation as I bring it on over. Okay, so hit delete and get rid of it. So basically, at this point, let's add some shape dynamics. Again, let's go ahead and turn on the scattering again. There's all there. The color dynamics is on, and we start playing with this, and look at all the cool little things that you can do. All right. Now, what is texturing all about? It's simply adding a texture. As you can see, look at this shape right over here. I'm going to turn off the texture. You see what's happening? It's altering the edge texture of my shape. So let's come up here and make the brush a little bit smaller. And let's draw. That's, uh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and pull this on back. And let's draw some little shape there. Now, let's go ahead and add a texture and draw next to it. As you can see, it's very almost difficult to see, but there's texture in here that is not here. It doesn't exist here. And you can add whatever texture that you like. Come right over to here. Go to your drop menu. You can add more textures like um, artist surfaces. Say append. There they are. You can add more, such as patterns. And append again. The pen simply adds to what you already have. Okay. Once I select the texture, and let's pull this on back a little bit, and let's see what, it, what that looks like. And if you look at the line itself, it's a little more of a, more of a textured feeling on each of those little linear strokes. All right, so play around with these. Um, last, I'd like to just you know, simply share with you the dual brush, which is simply adding other techniques from other brushes to what I have, as you can see, I can select another brush. How about this little oak leaf brush? And we're just blending it with the one that we've already created. Now, I'm going to get, go ahead and add, add this little, almost like a little noise brush here. Very similar to the other. I'm going to pull it on down. And how about if we add more of a circular brush to it? And you're going to get a whole nother effect here. Okay, so play around with this. Experiment with this. I can't say enough for experimenting. If I go to wet edges, let's take a look at wet edges real quick. In fact, to show you wet edges, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to select a different type of a brush. It's a standard soft edge brush. And I'm going to, I'm going, I'll leave red the color. I'm going to go ahead and paint something here. All right. My transfer is off for my brush. It went back to the particular presets for the brush that I chose over here. We're going to come on back. Now, select wet edges. Take a look at the shape and see what it's going to do. See that? The more I add pressure, it's giving it a feel of, of a watercolor spreading out where the edges are much more denser and the center portion is a little more um, transparent. All right, so I hope you enjoyed uh, video number two um, of the basic customization of your brushes in relation to your Wacom tablet. And um, I'm going to do one last video for you to, it'll be a standalone video for you to take a look at in terms of using your Wacom properties uh, to customize for your particular style of painting okay so this is Stephen Burns I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time